Hello, welcome. Today I'm going to talk about what I do is not who I am. I find this a really interesting topic. Um, hi, my name is Diane Simboro of Thrive After Family Violence and um, I'm a survivor of family violence and for the past 10 years I've been working with other survivors of violence to help them go from just surviving to thriving. Um, so I've witnessed friends and colleagues of mine who for some reason have not been able to continue to work in their chosen profession. So for many years I was a nurse and back injuries are unfortunately quite common among nurses. Um, I saw other nurses struggle when their chosen profession was no longer available to them due to an injury that impaired their ability to, to work. Um, but what we do is not who we are even though we might often attach an identity to what we do. For example, I would say, I am a nurse. But when I sustained a permanent back injury on the job, I could no longer work as a nurse. It didn't stop me being qualified as a nurse, but it did stop me working as a nurse. So nursing was my vehicle, what I call my vehicle, it was what I chose to do for the period of time I was able to. But when that vehicle was no longer available to me, my life didn't end. It simply took another turn and I chose another vehicle. So instead of focusing on what I'd lost, I chose to focus on what I could do instead of nursing. What would my new vehicle be? So what we do is not who we are. Who we are, or our identity, carries through whatever we choose to do. That is constant. But the vehicle we travel in is rarely a constant. Rarely a constant. I should mention that um, I learned the terminology of vehicle from one of my mentors, and I really like it, which is why I'm talking about vehicles instead of identity. Okay. So after family violence, there are changes of circumstances, um, including changes of job cho choices, and that's resulting from a change of address that's necessitated because of safety issues, or even because of injuries, a change of job because of injuries sustained from family violence. Um, sadly, acquired brain injuries are common among survivors of family violence but they're not mentioned as much as the statistics of the women and children who've lost their lives to family violence. We hear more about that than we do about the, the permanent injuries that are sustained. So I found a new vehicle after my back injury, and thankfully that was a job working in schools and I enjoyed school hours and school holidays, which matched my children's needs at the time very well because my children were younger then. But when I realized that I would have to separate from my abusive husband, my job had to change because the school holidays for me were unpaid leave, unlike other teachers. So I had to find something else that would provide me with a regular income that I could count on every fortnight. I needed that certainty. So I jumped into another vehicle. <laughs> but I was still the same person. That never changed. I was just getting used to driving another vehicle, getting used to doing a different job. Once I had the, the job security I needed, I went ahead with the separation. So the new vehicle was simply a stepping so stone to the next phase of my life. It was just a bridge to the next phase. Okay. Then I became a single mother, what is termed a single mother. So I went from saying I am married with two children to saying I am a single mother. I was still the same person, but my situation had changed. It took me a while to adjust to saying I am a single mother because that title has a different sound to married with kids. And I was married for 27 years. There is a stigma attached to the title of single mother, whether we like it or not. The same as there is a stigma attached to mental health issues such as depression or anxiety. And these depression and anxiety are also very common among uh, survivors of family violence. Saying, if I said I, I am depressed or I have anxiety, it's not who I am, okay? It's a vehicle that I'm traveling in for a period of time um, 
And then when I overcome my depression or anxiety, I choose another vehicle. I'm traveling a different way. The vehicle I'm choosing then is being free to choose my life, being free to choose my relationships. That's my vehicle. Hope this is making sense. So each vehicle is transport through life for a while, okay? Each vehicle provides new skills because it's different to the last vehicle. I'm going to take it down to, to really basic level by saying, for example, I'm going to use cars and things. For example, my first car used to break down all the time. It was an absolutely atrocious car, you know, <laughs> it was all I could afford at the time. And one day it literally collapsed on the highway. Um, fortunately, it didn't kill anybody or, any, or us. I, um, after that, I rode a motorbike for a while and I had to learn different skills riding a motorbike instead of a car. Then I drove a three-ton truck and I had to learn different skills for that. Sometimes I drove a manual vehicle. Sometimes it was an automatic. But it was still all driving. Okay, and each vehicle that I drove in or rode on um, taught me something new that I could carry forward to next time, the next vehicle. Yeah, so that takes it to a really basic level. So what you do is not who you are. Everything we do is the vehicle we travel in for a period of time. And there are lots of changes. So I am the same person no matter what vehicle I'm traveling in, no matter what I am doing, I'm the same person. Why is, it so, why is this so important that I'm dedicating an, an entire video to talking about this topic? It's important because if we attach an identity, if we attach identity to what we are doing or what we call ourselves, when that is taken away from us for whatever reason, if our identity is attached to it, it's much harder to adjust to the change. And a change, when I'm talking about family violence, a change that is likely necessary or, and often out of our control. Okay? So that's why I, I like the word vehicle because it's better than identity. Uh, because it doesn't carry as much weight. You know, having a vehicle doesn't sound the same as my identity. Yeah? It's interchangeable and it's transient. Okay, But who I am is a constant. That doesn't change. Um, I can grow, I can evolve. That sort of change is, is natural. But um, who I am is always the same. It always is a constant within me. And no matter what is changing around me, that is my constant. So I hope, I hope that's interesting for you. I think it's important to uh, the terminology that we use and, um, and what weight it carries is, is really important. But attaching an identity to what you do or who you are, um, it's transient. You know, and it's really good just to be able to stand back and understand, hang on, this is just another vehicle. I'm going to learn new skills from this. I'm going to learn something different and I can apply that in the future. I will become more and more skilled as I travel through life and I learn different things. Okay, so I hope this is helpful. Um, uh, this came to me just suddenly today. So I figure it's something I needed to say. Please uh, leave a comment or follow me so you don't miss a live. Please share this if you find this helpful. Um, there are always people out there who I know need to hear these messages but don't always get access to them. So please feel free to share them with your friends. And remember, as I say each time, recovery from family violence takes place just one tiny step at a time. This, uh, this terminology of vehicle versus identity is one more step. Thank you for joining me today. See you next time. Bye.